Everybody, good morning. Um, back in kids' worship, uh, we moved some stuff around, and I'm setting up for Camille this morning, so I'm doing this as a test to see if later today she can record and we can put out our Sunday video for next week. So anyway, um, excited. We are in Romans today, so we finished Mark yesterday. Um, so Romans chapter 1. So Paul, a servant of Christ, Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture concerning his son, who w was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your face is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve or, or serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will I may now at, le at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you that I impart, I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, by yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish, so I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for in for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown, them, shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in, in the things that have been made, so, th so they are without excuse." For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged into the glory of the immortal God for the image resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in lust of their hearts and impurity and dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature, and the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to be debased to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner and unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanders, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithful, faithless, heartless, ruthless, Though they know God's righteous decree they, that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Um, so first off, we got Paul here uh, writing to the Romans. Um, you know, he was sad. He wasn't able to be with them. Um, you know, I can kind of imagine Paul. Uh, you know, I've been a part of Union now for whew, uh, almost three years. 
Um, but you know, I still have a longing to go back to Camp Machindo, right? I, I love my time there. I mean, I even have, you know, the other places that I've been ministering to, like, I have a desire to go back there and to have actual plans to go back to somewhere and then have them fall short. Like I could imagine that just like, Oh, my heart, I want to see my friends. I want to see the people I care about. Uh, especially when you have that discipleship, you know, how close of a bond that is. And so, you know, just how he longs to go to Rome and just be with them. Um, but, you know, he's able to write a letter instead, uh, which we all <laughs> then get to benefit from because if you just showed up and talked to them, uh, no one had a tape recorder. So we get to um, we get to learn from his letters um, um, for that. So that's that's a interesting part of, you know, of this. And I think that's uh, part of a couple of the letters he writes. Um, so but then uh the second part um, of this, I, I really in um, we've kind of I've talked about this way back in uh, when we were in Corinthians, but just the idea that God, God doesn't make us follow Him. Um, God lets us choose, and when we choose to be disobedient and surround ourselves with other people who choose to be disobedient, then we get in that kind of think tank of this you know, embodiment of, hey, it's okay to do these things. And then when we see other people do these things, it's okay to do those things. And then we move the next step. And then it's a little farther from God. And then we all do these things. And we move a little farther from God. And then, you know, it just builds. So at first it's just one person. Then somebody sees that. Then it's like, oh, hey, let's do that. Then all of a sudden there's a big group here, right? And then it goes to what one person goes the next step. And then the whole horde follows. So it's just that mob mentality that pulls us away from God when we let our our human hearts our sinful nature pull us that way but when we do the other way right when somebody goes hey this is what God really wants from us oh yeah let's do that and then the horde follows and then somebody else steps up and they say hey this is right this is what's true this is what God is and that other and then people follow that um you know hopefully we're setting that example we're trying to go past what is expected of us in a way that we show the people around us, hey, this is what God truly wants for us. Um, you know, I, I think there's so much in our American culture, especially right now, that is not going very well um, that we have, that we're somewhere in between, obviously, right? We're not completely over here where we don't know anything about God, but we also, you know, as a nation, aren't completely living every moment for God. And I think the pendulum is kind of somewhere in the middle uh, and it's different for everybody but I hope that we s can see ourselves growing this way and that's what we need to do and it's not a um, at least in my thought it's not a hey everybody let's all do this or else I'm not going to but let's us make an example of ourselves that we don't get caught up in these things you know that we don't um, see our you know since they did not see fit to acknowledge God God they, God gave them up to a debased mind that they what ought not to be done and so that's going here God's letting them choose this but instead we choose what is right right we seek those good things we avoid those evil desires all those things that are talked about here plus so many other things this isn't a like exhaustive list of like hey these are bad sins don't do these things but everything else is eh. but these are his examples that came to mind of things he thinks they're struggling with um, things he thinks you know are things in there that we might be struggling with and so we want to just continue to push forward in a way that, that we grow closer to God instead of letting these things pull us away from God. Um, I just I love that thought, that idea, um, just completely. I mean, in my head, if you think about someone who's completely given themselves over to some sort of sin, you know, to uh, drugs or, or any of those types of things, they just let that become part of their life. And that is what they strive for. That is what controls them. But if we do that, and it's a weird parallel, but if we do that same kind of uh, push, um, maybe not push, but if we give ourselves over to God in that same way, that uh, if you think of God as a drug, right, you just want more, you can't handle more, or you just want more, and that's not the best parallel. Um, so I'm sorry if, if uh, some of you, because, um, yeah, there's a whole lot more to a drug issue, but um, just kind of the generic uh, what people think of, I guess we'll just go with that. But if we give ourselves over to God like that, where we just can't get enough, we have to have more God, how much further are we going to push ourselves? We don't care who's around us. We don't care who's telling us, no, you don't 
don't need to do that for Jesus. That's too far. You don't have to do that. If we let that be part of our our thing, then that comes this way. But if we ignore those people that are keeping us away from God, you know, even Jesus, you know, to Peter, you know, get behind me, Satan, because Peter makes sense. He's like, hey, let's not go get crucified. I mean, that's a pretty good idea, right? But Jesus knew what God's will is. So he was, Jesus obviously was like way over here, um, but he knew Peter's mind was still like, hey, I care about you. But Jesus, his mind was on God. And he didn't care what his friends thought. So even if, yeah. So it's a weird thing because you can easily get your theology mixed up. Um, so you need people around you to build you up. You need to be solid in God's word. Uh, but just make sure the people around you are helping you get better instead of bringing you down. So that way we can grow in Christ um, and, and have that that pull, that desire to be in him. So um, so that's my rant for today. I love that idea. Um, I love Romans. I'm excited for it. So I uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you uh, join us this evening. Um, we have a little bit of worship and Pastor Rick's talking uh, tonight um, at 6, I believe. So I uh, hope to see you there um, online is where it's going to be. So hopefully you can check in with us. But uh, have a great day. Bye. <laughs>